Hello there. So at the end of this video, we will have it set up to where our plants that we have planted will be able to be watered. And then they'll grow. And they'll even grow at different rates. So the onion takes four days to grow. I've watered it once. Two, three, four. And then can't water it anymore. Potato, I've done it once, twice. Three, four, five, six, seven. Because it takes seven days to grow. So you'll be able to set it up to have different growth rates for different plants. Of course, it won't just all be watered all at once. We'll set it up later on to have a date system. But for now, that's what to expect from this video. See you in it. We'll set up our watering system and we'll set it up to where each crop can have a different growth rate. So, in our project, first thing we need to do is we're going to go into our base crop. We'll open the full blueprint. And we'll get rid of these two, but on begin play, we want to set the relative scale of the static mesh that is the representation of our vegetable to a smaller size. So we will set relative scale 3D. The reason we're doing it that way instead of setting the actor size is because then it might make it harder for our traces or interaction checks to make sure it hits. So we just want to set the scale of the static mesh while leaving the actor as the official full size. So I'm going to give this a default of 0.5 and then promote this to a variable called start size. Now since we have a start size, we will also need an end size. So basically what size is it when it's fully grown? So this will be full grown size. But it doesn't stop there because we're also going to need a current size so that when we are doing our timeline to grow it, we know what size it currently is. And then one more that will be our target growth size because we're going to start at this size aiming for this size but we need to go from this size to this size and then do comparisons it, it seems confusing but once we break it all down it shouldn't so we're going to add a custom event in here called watered we will replace this with the blueprint interface call later on but for now just to get things going that'll work for us so when this thing is watered we need to determine its current size. So we'll grab our static mesh and we'll get scale 3D, get relative scale 3D. And that will be our current size. Now for the full grown size, I'm just going to go ahead and default this to something uh, 3 will work for now. Each one can have its own different size. Each one can have its own different start size full grown size, how many days it's going to take, etc. So when it's watered, we need to get our current size, and then we need to, to determine the size we're going to grow to. So we'll take our full grown size, break that vector open. Since we're using the scale and scaling it evenly across, we can just use this Z. We'll take this Z and we're going to divide that by an integer. This will be days to grow. How many days do you want the crop to take to grow? For now I'm going to default this to 4. And we'll plug that in. So this defaults right now to 3. So if I divide this by 4, then it's 0 0.75. If I add 3 divided by 4 again, it becomes 1.5, and then so on and so forth. So it'll take whatever and then add it to it. So we need to set this our target growth size. So we will set this. We will make a vector. And we can plug this into all three slots since we're just using even scaling across. That up and into place. All right. So now we have our current size, we have our target growth size, and now we need to lerp between them, which means we will need to add a timeline. 
call it growth and make sure it is on play from start so that every time it cycles through it plays from the very beginning i'm going to add an alpha in here i'm going to set it to one for now you can make it take as long as you want set a key at the beginning to zero and at the end to one or whatever your full thing is and now when we do the update we want to set relative scale 3d and basically we want to lerp between our current size and the target so we'll do a lerp vector plug our alpha in our a is our current size and b is our target growth size the reason we want to do it with the set beforehand is you don't want to just try to plug in the relative scale and then add to it because it'll throw it off. So you want to have hard targets for them to hit. If you're using this or using stuff like this, it can kind of make it a floating target and then it'll cause some issues, especially if you're using this. So we want to go ahead and cache these values into something that we can have a hard target to aim for. Now, after it has finished updating we want to see if it has reached its full grown size so we'll do a branch on the finished and we're going to get our static mesh get its oh relative scale 3d then we will break that vector open and we want to see if it is greater than or equal to our full grown size plus our start size. So we want to make sure that we're taking into consideration that this is going to start at a scale and then factor that into our final calculations. So we'll take our start size, our full grown size. We can just split this struct pin. We'll move them over here. And we want to see if the Z of our relative, current relative is greater than or equal to the combination of our full grown and start size. So we'll do an addition. I'm just going to do it this way. It doesn't matter which one you add into which. I just like for the lines to look like that. And actually, you know, we don't need, we just promote this to a variable called B grown and we'll just plug this in like that so we don't really necessarily need the branch it's not like we're going to do anything else if it's not ready let's just kind of tidy a little bit that looks worse that looks dynamite so at the very beginning we also want to make sure that we're not watering something that's already fully grown. So we will use a branch here to see if it's already fully grown. If it's not, then we can carry on because you don't want to water something that's, you know, it, it's going to exceed its growth size if you continue to carry on. We will come back later on to when we... uh. When we fully make sure that they're all working, we'll come back and add another Boolean check to see if it's already been watered for the day because we're going to reset this at the end of the night once we get to that point. But for now, that should be good. So let's get our onion and start size, full grown size, current size, target growth size. These can all just be, oh, well, let's just do it in the base. So current size, we'll set that to zero. Target growth size, also zero. Oh, why did that go to 5.3? I tapped zero. That's weird. Anyway, compile everything. So it will start at 0.5. Full grown takes about four days. That'll be fine. So that's our onion. Just so I don't get confused, I'm going to get rid of everything but my onion seed. Potato and the cauliflower will basically do the same, but I'm, I'm just aiming at that one for right now. So we'll jump in and just plant it in the dirt and make sure it's getting set to the right size at least. So yeah, it's real small means it's going to the 0.5. We don't have a way of watering it, 
So we will work on that now. So we'll need to set up a watering can tool. So in my tool section, I'm going to right click one of them. You can either right click the base tool and create a child or right click one of your tools and just duplicate it. So that's what I'm going to do. BP underscore watering can. We don't have an actual watering can mesh. So I'm going to use a barrel. Doesn't really make sense, but it'll, you know, it'll work. <laughs> So for the tool ID, it is the watering can. The socket, yeah, it goes into that socket. Item ID, watering can. All right. And then we'll go set it up in our data table. So do, do, do. watering can. Item ID is our watering can. It is a tool. The item image will be uh, just completely random. I don't have any. It's a rock. Water from a stone. Hey, how biblical. So current stack one, max stack one. And the item class is our watering can. Now we will need a use animation, so I'm just going to go ahead and set this to the chop just so that I can use this button to bring me straight to them. Because the water, the animation I'm going to use is this attack A because it kind of has that aggressive thrust. Like he, it just violently watering the plants. So I'm going to create an anim montage out of it. MT underscore player watering. We will need to open this up and set in a anim notify. So right about here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Add notify, montage notify, call it water. Back in our item data table, we do want to make sure that we update that use animation so that we don't get confused when it's not triggering the notify later on because it sure would be a shame to sit there for 45 minutes wondering why it's playing the animation, but it's not triggering the notify. I don't want that to happen to anybody. That would certainly ruin your night, probably. <laughs> yeah, I did that. All right, let's go bring our tool out. Set it right here. So that is our watering can. And we should be able to pick it up and use the animation so far, but it won't have its notify event set up. But it's doing what we need it to do so far. So we need to go actually into our player blueprint. And when we use our tool, so we'll go to our item use function, go to use tool, double click it, it'll bring it over to our tool use. And then we can do our switch on name. We'll add our water notify event. And when we do, when it plays the animation, it reaches that water notify, we need to make sure that we're interacting with a dirt plot so we'll get our interact checker get overlapping actors we'll filter for the dirt plot itself we'll see if it is a valid index the index being zero just because we want to get the very first one if it is a valid index then we want to get that index and we will replace this with Notif uh, interface calls later on but for now we're just going to do some casting since it already exists in the world it's already loaded into memory it's not a problem so if it is a valid index we'll plug this into our branch we'll take our get and we'll cast to the dirt plot from there we can get current crop and we can convert that to a validated get. And if it is valid, like there's a crop in the plot, then we will call our watered function. Just like that. So get my, my hoe, my seed, oh, and my watering can, watering can. Fill the dirt, drop the seed, sprinkle that water, and it's growing. 
Let's see, that was one time. So there's one, two, two. It grew once, didn't it? Let's try this full screen so I can double check. So, till, plant, water, it's growing. It's not growing anymore. So what is the problem here? Oh, I'm dumb. I figured it out. So we're telling it to grow to a full grown size. We're just setting the target growth based on this, but we need to take our current size and add this to it and then set that to our target growth. So that's my bad. So we will add, that's an equal sign. We'll add this to this and then this to this. So we want to take our current size and then add the full grown size divided by the days to grow, make the vector, then add that. And then that is our target growth size. Uh, otherwise it just grows to the same size over and over and over again and doesn't work the way we want it to. So till the ground, plant a potato, can barely see it, water that thing. Two, three, four, and it's full grown. I can't plant it. I can't water it anymore. So let's check the onion. Oh, plant the onion. That's a potato. Oops, water. Two, three, four. Doesn't grow anymore because it's full grown. So yeah, now they'll all grow. So you can adjust the the sizes. And so let's just, for the potato, let's do the potato real quick. So I'm gonna set its full grown size to five and it's gonna take seven days to grow. Just as an example. So, till the ground, plant the potato, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it can't water anymore, so seven days and it's fully grown. So yeah, you can do whatever vegetables you want. You can make them grow as big as you want, however many days you want. Later on, we're going to set up a day, a date system. So we'll actually be able to just water them once per day. And then we'll have to go to the character's house and sleep in the bed and then come back out and then be able to water them again. Uh, and then we'll work on setting up to where the dirt plot gets darker as you water it. So you can just visually check to see. I don't know why I did the visual hand motion like you can see me, but so you can just visually check to make sure you've watered for that day. And then for rainy days, it'll you can walk outside and see that they're already all watered. But we'll get into that stuff soon. So hope you enjoy this one. Uh, if you did, you know, like, subscribe, all that YouTuber crap. <laughs> see you on the next one. Bye.